Welcome to our lecture online. To get even a better understanding of the curl, there's another way in which we can look. If the vector field for which we're trying to find the curl is in the xy plane, we know that the curl will be a vector pointing in the z direction, which means that if we take the del operator and we multiply times the vector field via the cross product, we will only have a single surviving term, the z term. And so essentially then the curl will become equal to the z component times the partial derivative with respect to x of the y component min minus the partial derivative with respect to y of the x component. Now we left the two vector fields on the board that we got from the previous video and essentially we're going to take a look at that and see how that applies. But essentially then the curl is equal to the change in the vector field divided by the change in the x direction. So in other words, we're going to make a change in the positive vector direction and see how much the vector field changes. And now we're going to subtract from that the change in the vector field again when we make a change in the negative y direction. So let's apply that to our two vector fields and see what happens. First, let's take this field right here. We're going to make a change in the x direction. So we're at the origin and we're going to change in the positive x direction. We're moving this way and notice that the change in the vector field will be in a counterclockwise direction. That is a curl. And if we take our fingers and point them in that direction, our thumb points in the positive z direction. So this is a contributing term in this vector field. Now we're going to subtract from that the change in the vector field when we change in the negative y direction. So here's the negative y direction, but notice if I move in the negative y direction, there's no change in the curl, so that's a non-contributing term. This doesn't contribute anything in this vector field, only this does, and so that will then be the magnitude of the curl and then the direction will point in the positive z direction. Let's take a look over here. Here we're going to move in the positive x direction from the origin. So notice when I move in the positive x direction, I have a curling motion in the counterclockwise direction. So that causes a curl to exist. So that's the first term. And then we're going to subtract the change in A when we make a change in the negative y direction. So we move in the negative y direction. And again, we see a curling motion. We see it going like this. And notice that will cause a change to occur. Now, why the negative? Well, notice I move in the negative y direction. I have a curl. I have the vector going in this direction, and then it changes into this direction. Hmm. Let's see if I make that. I'm not making sense out of that. So let me think about that for a moment and see what is happening here, because I thought I had that straight in my mind. Mm hmm. Ah, yes. I think I have it now. Okay. That's what is going on here. The reason why we have to have a negative is that the, the vector field here is such a way that the x component of the vector field has a negative value. So that's why I need a negative to compensate for this negative right here to make it into a positive change, a positive curl. And you can see that when you look at it, if you move in the negative y direction, you do get a positive curl because it's, point, it's curling in the, in the counterclockwise direction. That's a positive curl. So I was wondering for a moment, why do I need a negative here? But it's to compensate for this negative value right here. Otherwise, you would be subtracting this instead of adding it. So the negative causes this negative to be positive, and you get the correct value. It will then be an additive term that was in this particular case. So it makes sense because you need a negative here to get the curling motion of the vector field. For a moment there, I was... I uh, was kind of um, uh, surprised, but essentially the way you want to look at it is this way. If you move in the positive x direction, you have a curling motion this way. If you move in negative y direction, you have a curling motion this way. So in both cases, you have a curling motion in the same direction, adding together to give you the total curl of that vector field when we calculate it. And that is how we know.